I understand that the $600 plus up, that's above the state unemployment <clears throat> benefits that they will continue to receive, is in effect a disincentive. I mean, we're paying people not to work. It's better than their salaries would get. That was uh, White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow complaining, albeit in a strange way, that uh, pay for workers is too low. <laughs> I mean, that's exactly what he's talking about. Oh, I mean, we're paying people too much on unemployment. And the result of that, of course, is that, well, workers don't get enough money at their jobs. He came, of course, to the wrong conclusion about it, uh, about what to do about it. But understand, like, that, that, is, that is the admission. People are getting paid on unemployment more than they would make at their jobs. And so his, uh, you know, solution to that, of course, is to, well, obviously, we got to pay people less on unemployment. <laughs> We don't need to expand uh, or, you know, uh, to raise wages for, for workers. Nope, can't do that. That hurts corporations. Uh, so now we have to reduce people's unemployment benefits. Uh, now, that $600 a week, right? That extra $600 a week on top of unemployment benefits, which in some states can go pretty low down to just under or, or just over $200 or so a week. Uh, on unemployment, which really isn't a whole lot, especially if you had actually been making more uh, at your job. And so this is, uh, this look, this came along with the CARES Act, and it's been helping the now 40 million Americans that are unemployed thanks to the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, we have not seen this level of unemployment since the Great Depression. So now the administration has been pushing very, very hard to, you know, open up the country. And in fact, Larry Kudlow is going to argue next that, well, we, we, we need to give people an incentive to go back to work as we're forcing the, the states to kind of open back up or urging the states to open back up, I should say. That returning to employment, uh, we are in the administration, the president is looking uh, at a reform measure uh, that will still provide uh, some kind of bonus uh, for returning to work, but it will not be as large and it will create an incentive to work. You know, that goes along with the other incentives we've generated. What other incentives? I mean, there's, look, there's, the fact is that you cannot refuse in a job, you cannot refuse a job and collect unemployment. So what other incentive is he talking about? He's talking about floating a payroll tax cut. That's what that is. Well, I mean, if we do a payroll tax cut, well, then that's going to get people to go back to work, but it's also going to hurt Social Security and really isn't, it still isn't going to help the people, the millions of Americans who are still going to be unemployed. Uh, and so, come on, come on. You realize it's only uh, an extra $600 a week, right? It's not like they're making CEO pay here. It's not like they're making as much as Larry Kudlow would make. Right. That six hundred dollars, again, combined with state benefits as low as two hundred eighty five dollars a week in many states only evens out to about a living wage. A again, and, and it varies greatly on the state. Uh, and so I find it kind of funny that the government realizes or at least people in the government realize uh, that people need more to live on. And yet refuse to raise the minimum wage to a living wage. Instead, Republicans are like, oops, we just accidentally made the case for higher wages. We have to end that. We have to put the, you know, we have to put the kibosh on this one. Uh, stop it. Stop it now. Just stop. 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 Can't have it. Can't have it. I mean, look, the only the, the only reason I think that this could pass, right? And, and Bernie Sanders stood up for this. And he said, no, I'm going to block this bill unless I'm going to trash the whole damn thing unless you give this extra $600 unemployment benefit on top of state unemployment benefits. We're, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crash it. And so these Republicans, look, they've been salivating at giving as much of, uh, as $5 trillion to their wealthy donors, to corporations, right? Uh, and so... They're like, we got to get this money to the corporations. We got to get this money to the banks. Uh, our, our donors really, really, they want this. The stock market, oh my God, our stocks are, are tanking. 
we got to do something about this. And so they let it go, but they didn't realize the implications where now you have, you know, people that are sitting at home, right, uh, that can't go back to their job thanks to, corona, thanks to coronavirus. Now they're getting a living wage or, or, you know, something close to it. And they're like, wow, turns out we've been getting screwed over by our employers for quite some time. Maybe we should be in favor and, you know, maybe we should actually have higher wages, a, a living wage. Oops. And look, here's the thing, right? Uh, so no, Cutlow's going to talk about like, oh, you know, we want a good economic recovery. And that's why we're, you know, basically trying to reopen the economy because we're ready to have an economic recovery. And this whole thing, this, these unemployment benefits, they're, they're just getting in the way, man. Actually, in reality, they're not getting in the way. Again, you cannot refuse a call to return back to work and get unemployment benefits. That, that doesn't happen, right? No, they're just using his excuse because, oh man, turns out people are are realizing that they're getting screwed over by the government and by their employer, and we can't have that. So we got to take away that and give a payroll tax cut instead, which again furthers our conservative goals of hurting Social Security. So there's that, right? So now, if you really do care about economic recovery then it would make sense to allow people to continue to have that benefit until this is basically over, expand it far longer, right, than July. And again, until employment starts to return to pre-coronavirus levels, I would add a UBI on top of that, uh, because what you want in a consumer-driven economy is for people to spend money. When people come out, you want them to have money that they're itching to spend, like, oh my God, I can't wait to go out and watch a movie. Or I can't wait to go out and, uh, you know, frequent some restaurants. Yes, I've got all this money uh, that I've saved up that I couldn't spend during the coronavirus pandemic uh, because all the stores were closed naturally. So yeah, let's go out. Let's go spend some money. Let's drive the economy. That would be smart. Now, most people right now, and they're not ready to come out, right? They're not ready to come out because we still have coronavirus. We still have a pandemic that's going on, that we still have cases that are rising. In fact, after Memorial Day, uh, three weeks since Memorial Day, we have seen a gigantic spike in coronavirus cases. That's not an accident. That's exactly what's what we said was going to happen if you go out and you flout social distancing rules or physical distancing rules of six feet and not wear masks. What did you think was going to happen? The coronavirus is magically going to disappear because Donald Trump said, uh, it'll, be, it'll be gone by April. Remember that? It'll be gone by April. Well, here we are, mid-June, still not gone. In fact, they're talking about a second wave, although maybe that's incorrect because in order to have a second wave, you have to be done with the first one. And clearly, we're not done with the first one yet. Um like I said, most people not ready to come out or there's a rest of those people that are too broke to do anything. Remember, not everybody is eligible for unemployment benefits. Like some people might have quit a job like a week before the shutdown, right? Or a week before all this stuff happened and wouldn't be eligible for this. Or, you know, just all sorts of different circumstances where people are not eligible for those expanded unemployment benefits or any unemployment benefits. Not only that, but you have people that are navigating broken down systems, systems that were set up intentionally to fail, like for example, in Florida, or systems that can't handle the strain of millions upon millions of people trying to file for unemployment. That 40 million number off, definitely off. Real unemployment is around 20% disastrous. Again, this is the worst unemployment that we have had since the Great Depression. Now, it's different than the Great Depression in the fact that this was an artificial shutdown as a result of doing something about coronavirus. But nonetheless, it is a, an economic shutdown. It is a recession slash depression. And so there is that. Uh, and so now, without having that money, all those millions of people who also might be facing evictions 
as uh, protections against being evicted are starting to wear out in many places. And so now we're facing not only an economic recession, but also you have a housing crisis. And it's because we didn't support these people. All we got was, you know, again, unemployment benefits didn't help everybody. And also the one $1,200 check that a select few got. Uh, it didn't apply to everybody. Not everybody was able to get it. And so that was supposed to last for four months. Ridiculous. No, not enough to stave off this economic hardship. We should have had a month of UBI of at least $2,000 per person. That's what we should have had. Without that, we're going we're gonna to see some major, major issues. And it's going to hamper any sort of economic recovery that we were hoping for. But again, they don't care, right? Mnuchin, Kudlow, Trump, they're done. They're bored with coronavirus. Move on to the next one. Open it up. And it's time to open it up because, well, for one, they're not at risk. They're definitely not essential workers, <laughs> I would say. Um, or at least they're not, they don't have to go and be around other people. Now, Donald Trump's stupid, so he doesn't. He goes around people. He doesn't wear a mask. He was shaking hands. I'm surprised he hasn't gotten it yet. Or maybe he has. I have no idea. Uh, but Cudlow, you think he can do his job at home? Of course he can. <laughs> a lot of them do. And, and so they're really not as much at risk as anyone else especially with the, the people that they're really trying to prod to get back into the workforce. People that, you know, work in gyms or nail salons, restaurants, you know, sit down restaurants specifically. Uh, and so those are some problems, right? But no, they want to get people back. They don't take risk. And what they're really worried about is, is their stock portfolios. And that's what it is. And, and look, the stock market's been in a roller coaster. It has. And it'll go up by a, a lot, weirdly so, like after the announcement of, you know, an additional few million people have got onto, you know, have, have applied for unemployment. Uh, and then it'll also go down. And so it's been a real roller coaster. And so a lot of these people are like, I don't know, we open up the country, uh, the stock will go up and that's good for our investments. And then we can trade and we can make money. And that's what it's really all about. And so... The only thing is that that's really going to prod them into doing more. And I, I've been trying to keep up with whether or not they're going to do another round of, of $1,200 uh, stimulus. Uh, certainly after the jobs report came out, a lot of Republicans in Congress are like, nope, nope, everything's normal. Back to work. We don't need no more stimulus. But then I keep hearing about the White House saying, ah, maybe more stimulus. I mean, the jobs report is good, but we might need. A little bit more, at least another round, and we're going to talk about the, you know, the Heroes Act and all that stuff. It's funding for the states. We don't know. We're not sure. So understand if the stock market takes another gigantic shit, then yeah, we are going to go and probably end up seeing more stimulus. Republicans will add even more corporate relief. Corporate Democrats will pass it forward. Uh, and they will fund the states and we might get another $1,200 check, but that's about it. Nothing really else. Right. Uh, and so there's not, I mean, there's not going to be a lot more help for the American people. Again, for the corporations, they got all the help. We got very, very little, and that's going to continue to be the case going forward. I mean, whoever thought that Republicans are best on the economy. No, you don't pay attention. Or maybe you think the stock market is a representation of the average worker. And based on what I've seen, though, and what we've seen, the, the data out there, stocks soaring as unemployment increases, I can assure you that is not the case. No, we actually need to continue to support the American worker by continuing these unemployment benefits, by instituting a UBI, uh, and not stopping them. We need to expand these benefits until this crisis is over, or else, like I said, we're going to see even worse economic outcomes. Hey, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the 
YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYT Nation set up to help us rely on the, you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.